Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the fourth in a series of video tutorials on how to create a first person shooter in Unity 5. So this episode is going to be all about uh, animation and some sound effects, primarily for our gun. Uh, by the end of this tutorial, I want to be able to click our mouse button and our gun fires, or it sounds like it fires and moves as well to show that it's, it's got a bit of recoil on it. Uh, it's fairly simple to do, but the process will take us a little bit, so let's get started. Before we go anywhere though, I want to change the intensity on the directional light just to make things a little bit darker. It's just a bit too bright at the moment. So I'm going to click on directional light, go on intensity, and I'm just going to move the slider down to about 0.5, just to make it a touch darker there. So the next thing you want to do is the animation. So click there, onto your first person character, and onto your gun. So you have to ensure you have your gun selected at this point because it's this that we want to animate. So to open up the animation, we need to go to uh, that little menu button there, add tab, add animation. And it'll open up this in, the, uh, in what is the project and console window down the bottom. So you now have the animation uh, window. Next thing to do, still making sure you have that gun selected, click on create, and let's simply call this gunshot. We'll need to reference this later on, so just remember your capitalization there. So if you have a capital G, capital S, uh, just make sure you remember that and click save. And you'll see a kind of a little time frame going on here and it should probably be set to samples 60. That means it going at 60 frames a second with this animation, which is completely fine for us right now. I uh, should say zero there to say frame zero which is the very very first it's the beginning it's the ultimate start of everything and we want to set the position of the gun which is at right now best way to do that is on a rotation on x just type one and then just type zero and you'll notice two dots there so it's kind of saved the settings of this right now and we want to go to the next frame so type frame one there and on rotation we're going to make our gun recoil, so let's put minus 5 there, and uh, let's see, so we've got the dots there, uh, I think that might just about do it to be honest. So let's go to frame 2, just to be uh, sure, and let's also set, let's put minus 5 again and then replace it with a 0. So this animation theoretically has three frames. The first frame is as it is now, the second frame is the gun recoiling, and the third frame is um, just back to normal again. So once you've done that, let's click this red play button at the top, and you should see the gun go a bit crazy. Yeah. So it's kind of constantly animating. At the moment, that is exactly how we want it to look, because we've got to put um, a script in place and we've got to change some animation settings to actually get it looking right. So next thing to do, let's click back on our project window and let's right click, go to create folder and I'm going to call this folder audio. Let's head into it and you can import this gunfire sound which is available for free on our website. If you head over there, the link is in the description. You can download it for free, or you can find your own gun sound, whichever you want. It is entirely up to you right now. Um, one thing to note as well, if you're having a problem with your rotation on your weapon, you may need to change the quaternion settings, which is this little button here on the M9 rotation, down here, and it is this bottom option. That one is probably going to be checked by default and sometimes it may work, but I think it's probably best if we select that for now as it will pretty much guarantee the uh, animation to actually rotate itself so as it looks like recoil. Okay, so the next thing to do is, let me think. On our M9, we need to add a component. Um, oh dear, what we Sorry. Add component there, 
uh, we need to go to audio and we need audio source. Uh, we need to untick play on awake and then we need to bring in this gunfire sound into our audio clip. So now our gun, um, oh actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we need to uh, remove this animator here. Right click, remove component, add component again, and I'll tell you what, let's do this differently. Let's type in here in the search box, anim. So we come up with animation animator as the top two results. We need to click animation. Let's untick play automatically because we don't want it to play automatically. We want it to only be initiated through the script that we're going to write in a second. And uh, we need to put our animation in there. So we need to drag gunshot into our animation right there. Uh, we may also need to mark it as legacy. It has given us a bit of a warning down there. We need to mark it as legacy. So to do that, select your animation, which will look like this. Go up here to your inspector pane, click there, go on to debug, and then click on legacy. And then let's head back into normal view. And now we have that set as legacy. So realistically, we're all good to go. And hopefully if we press play, our gun shouldn't move. It shouldn't do anything. That's fine. So now let's start writing a script. Uh, let's right click on assets, create, and we want folder because we're going to create a folder specifically for our script. Oops. So let's call this scripts. Uh, so in the folder, right click, create, and we're going to go with JavaScript as it is fairly easy. Now later on in the series we probably will be using C Sharp um, because I want to kind of bring across the fact that Unity can use multiple languages. So I'm going to start with JavaScript so we can all get a sense of how easy this is going to be. And then as we get further on in the series, we can go pretty advanced with C Sharp and see where we get to. So I am simply going to call this script um, gun fire. Okay, so double click and it should open up in mono develop. Now MonoDevelop is a program which comes with uh, Unity itself, which enables you to write scripts of any kind, C Sharp, Java, whichever. Um, you may find that yours opens up in Visual Studio. Don't worry too much. It doesn't matter which one you use, MonoDevelop or Visual Studio. If you feel you want to use one or the other, you go back to Unity, go to Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and you can change it in this top box here. So I'm going to be using Mono Develop. If you want to follow Mono Develop exactly, that's entirely up to you. If you want to use Visual Studio, it's completely fine. The script will still work the same. Okay, so once you're opened up here in Gunfire, delete the couple of lines it gives you because we're going to write this script uh, from scratch so I can hopefully try and explain things as I go along. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is a function. And um, we're gonna, it's going to be a function update. So it kind of, uh, to put it bluntly, it, every time a script is called, it, it brings this basically. An update is the most common function uh, that we'll be using at the moment. Uh, so you need open close bracket and then open curly bracket. Um, hopefully, I won't get you too lost on this script. Uh, there are, I think it's going to be about six or seven lines. And I'll try and keep it as simple as possible, but if you get lost along the way, this script will also be available on our website for free. So it's, you should be able to just copy and paste if you want to. Uh, the next line, we need to do an if statement. Uh, the reason we need an if statement is because we need to determine if a certain button is being pressed. So if, and then we want input dot get button down open bracket and then double quote and here we need to figure out which button is going to be defined as our mouse button and to figure that out we go back to unity we go to edit and uh, project settings and input you'll notice here you have a few different um, 
things, your horizontal, vertical, fire one, fire two. If you click this arrow on fire one, you'll see that it can be used as left control or mouse zero. Now mouse zero is defined as your left button on your mouse. So we need to use this fire one so as it enables us to use our mouse. So if we type here fire one double quote then we need to uh, close that curly bracket, uh, sorry close that bracket, close that bracket and then open curly bracket. So just to recap, if our mouse button is down, then we need to create a variable, and we can do that by typing var, and then we'll put gun sound, because we want our gun to obviously sound when we fire it, and that has to be defined as an audio source. If you remember, we added the audio source onto our M9 gun, just there. So we are kind of referencing that, and that will be equal to, we need to get the component, which is the audio source itself, which is dot, and then spiky bracket, and then audio source, close spiky bracket, and open close bracket, and then you need a semicolon at the end. Uh, just to quickly recap this line, uh, remember that uh, you need to be case sensitive. So it's a capital A, capital S on audio source on both of them, capital G, capital C, and I've kept gun sound all lowercase. So this is our variable. So we are stating that our gun sound, which is this, is the audio which is attached to our gun. And now we want to play it. So we can quite simply put gun sound dot Play. And remember that is a capital P on play. Open close bracket and then semicolon. And you have to remember that at the end of every line it has to be a semicolon if it is just a line of code. If it's something like a function or an if it has to be an open curly bracket. And at the end of our statement we close the curly bracket. So at this point we also want to get our animation and play our animation at the same time as our gun sound. So we need to get component and we want this one which is the animation if you remember correctly a couple of minutes ago we put in there our animation which is our gunshot uh, open close bracket because we don't want any statement within there dot play and we need to define what our animation actually is in this case it is gun shot. Remember that was a capital G and a capital S on there. Um, double quote there and close bracket, semicolon. And now we just need to close the if statement, which is close curly bracket, and then we need to close the function. So it's close curly bracket again. So I'm going to save that. And uh, I'll run through the script real quick again. So function update so it runs constantly. Uh, if our fire button down is uh, pressed down sorry which is our left mouse button then we need to define the variable of the gun sound which can be found in our audio source then we need to play it and we also need to play the animation called gunshot. So if we go back to Unity let's go to um, our script there and we need to drag it onto um, an, a game object and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to game object, create empty, right click, rename and we'll just call this gun mechanics. So in the future when we use different sounds, different guns, different animations they'll all be able to run from this game object. Now this game object much like um, every other game object exists in the scene but it has no um, visual presence as there is no component no nothing attached to it so we want to drag and drop our gunfire onto our gun mechanics and you can see over here that our script is now attached to uh, the gun mechanics gunfire so hopefully when we press play we should be able to have a look and oops 
dear me. We've uh, encountered an error down the bottom, as you can see there. Missing components, except there's no audio, so... Oh. Yes. Um, I think what we'll do instead, just for now, to keep it simple, is we'll put gunfire on the M9. So you should have um, your script on there. For now, I'm going to... I'll keep gun mechanics object, but I'm going to right-click and remove component, uh, just for now. So hopefully, let's press play again. And there we go. So our gun is firing every time we press our mouse button. And what we'll do now is let's play a little more with the animation. So if you go into N9, and you'll be able to see this will open up um, in your animation down here. And I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's bring this to uh, frame 4. So you can just drag and drop these little buttons here onto frame 4. And I'm going to Control S and save now. Uh, right, uh, sorry, not right click. <laughs> click on the play button and let's see how that changes our. Oh. Unity Editor has stopped working. Okay. <laughs> That's not what we wanted. Uh, bear with me one second, guys. I will um, restart this now. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, sorry about that. A bit of a well, a bit of a problem in Unity. How I love Unity crashing. Okay, so where were we? We were at the point of where we were firing our gun. Uh, so let's quickly check again. We can wander around and we can fire our gun, and it animates just fine. Okay, so that is the basics of uh, putting in a sound, putting in some animation for your gun. Um, next episode, we're going to be looking at some more scripting, and we're going to be looking at something called Raycast. Now, Raycast is something you need for when you want uh, kind of your bullet, or imaginary bullet in this case, to hit your enemy. Uh, Raycast is, uh, it's not difficult, it's not easy, but get your head around it, and it's uh, pretty simple in the end. So... Until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching and see you again.